So Funtouch OS 13 is finally here and it should soon roll out to Vivo and IQ phones if all goes well. Hi, I'm Aishad, you're watching Track and Take English and I've already installed the beta version of Funtouch OS 13 on this unit of the Vivo X80 Pro and we have another unit of the Vivo X80 Pro with Funtouch OS 12. Let's find out all that's new with Funtouch OS 13 but spoiler alert, there's not much new in there. So the very first thing that you will notice is that while Vivo did introduce a theming engine with, uh, you know, Funtouch OS 12, it wasn't very detailed. Obviously, this theming engine is based on, you know, Android 12's theming engine. And, you know, in the previous version, you could see that there were very few options that are available. And you can see that there are only three wallpaper color options. But with the new Funtouch OS 13 update, you get far more. Actually, you get eight color options and more preset colors as well, including some dual tones too. More importantly, this UI color now extends to system apps and also certain elements of the UI as well. For example, now I've picked one color over here based on the same wallpaper on Funtouch OS 12 and Funtouch OS 13, and you'll see the difference immediately. For example, let me quickly show you what the app drawer looks like. So the app drawer's color is slightly brownish out here where it hasn't changed over here. Now, when you look at the notification shade, you will also see the difference in the UI elements, the quick setting toggles, and of course, uh, you know, the shade itself. Let's quickly take a look at two system apps, which is basically something like settings. Again, the colors changed. Apart from this, you can also apply this color to icons too, which means that Google Apps and Vivo's very own apps will have themed icons as well. Let me quickly show you how that looks. So this is what it looks like. So you can see that certain apps that are present on the phone itself have a very different color right now. Now talking about visual changes, there's one very tiny little visual indicator that Vivo has added in the screen resolution option. This will be available only in phones like the Vivo X80 Pro where you get option for QHD and FHD. So when you open the screen resolution option, you get this earlier it was just like a couple of toggles that you could see now it gives you an idea of what the you know resolution will look like not a big deal but it's available now if you've come this far and if you like the kind of content that we make don't forget to support us hit that subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new tech video also youtube algorithm values engagement so it'll be great if you sort of comment below or maybe even give us a like provided you like the video no pressure. One new feature update is in Vivo's album app. Now, if you do use Vivo's album app, you must have realized that, you know, Vivo's album app till date didn't give you the option to hide photos, which has been finally added and rectified in Funtouch OS 30. So earlier, when you would select a picture, you wouldn't get the option to hide that you can see right now. So once you hit the hide button, it will hide that picture and it will be hidden within settings and hidden. So you have to open the settings menu and from there hidden and you will see that this image has been hidden, which is not available on Funtouch OS 12. Another new addition is one extra feature that's been added in the iManager app, an app that I haven't used a lot. I will be honest about that. So you now get the option for phone cooling. So basically what it does is that it checks the temperature of the phone and lets you know if your phone is running cool moderately or you know if it's running hot. So right now it's running moderately. So you can do one tap cooling out here and it will actually sort of put the two apps that were causing it to heat in the back burner. And apart from that, it will give you an option to automatically Screen, reduce the time for automatic screen lock because now I've set it to the duration is set to 10 minutes so it asks you to reduce that as well so that the screen is not on for a long time and reduce the screen brightness as well. Honestly these are basic things that most people will do anyway so I don't know how much utility anyone would have for this. By the way while going through these settings I noticed that there is a network uh, you know speed testing option which is of course available in Funtouch OS 12's iManager version as well so that lets you see what is the speed of your current network and currently it's just testing our Wi-Fi studio network so we'll get to see what the ping is like what the download speed is like and what the upload speed is like as well now once it runs the test and completes it it also gives you an uh, you know a sort of statistic which says that your internet speed is x percent better than users nationwide i don't know where what is the data set that it is comparing to but you know it's like a nice little graphic that is available but again this is something that's not new on funtouch os 13 just wanted to highlight it Another tiny little update is in the weather app that Vivo bundles with the phone. Again, I don't know how many people use the default weather app. If you do, let me know in the comment section below. In fact, also let me know if you use the iManager app. It'll be very interesting to see if people actually do. So the new addition that Vivo has added is the option to see the AQI, the current uh, you know air quality index of the city that you're living in. It's definitely useful. It's there in the home screen as well. So whenever you want that information, that's available for you. So the feature changes to the iManager app and the weather app could probably come in an update with Funtouch OS 12 phones itself. It's not there on the X80 Pro that I'm running right now, but maybe it'll come soon as well. So this is not
not necessarily a fun touch OS 13 thing, but yeah, I mean, it's there in the change log that Vivo sort of shares. Now, while I was browsing through the whole thing, this is something that Vivo doesn't really highlight. In the settings page, when you go to sound, uh, you'll notice that in Funtouch OS 12, it is just sound, but now it's sound and vibration. So I was like, why does it have a separate and vibration? And I noticed there's one extra sort of toggle that Vivo has added, which is not available on Funtouch OS 12. Again, very tiny, you know, not really important thing. Basically, now the phone will vibrate when somebody hangs up the call or answers it yeah I mean, whatever it's useful it's not you let me know now this change is probably more important uh, in terms of what we was added with funtouch os 13 and that is the fact that in the accessibility options now you get a couple of extra features let me quickly show you what that is in color and motion you'll see that there's now the option for color correction color inversion and the option to remove animations as well. This is something that should have been present on, you know, previous Funtouch OS versions, but surprisingly, it wasn't until now. It's available on many other skins on top of base Android. So this is definitely a welcome addition for sure. So the final feature that I want to highlight are basically Android 13 features, considering the fact that, you know, Funtouch OS 13 is based on Android 13. So these features have also been ported over. So the first one that I want to show is let me quickly install an app first, provided it happens quickly. Thankfully, it's fast today. So when you open an app for the first time, you have to explicitly give it permission to allow uh, or not allow for the app to send you notifications, which wasn't available in Android 12. Now it's available in Android 13. But you know what's kind of odd is that this design language is completely different from what Funtouch OS 13 does. There are a lot of inconsistencies, I'll tell you that. Another Android 13 sort of feature that is available in Funtouch OS 13 is app languages. I've mentioned this again, certain apps, like for example, Google Chrome, YouTube, are available in an option to sort of run in your native language if you would so wish to. So basically when you do YouTube and if you hit, uh, say for example, if you want to have the YouTube app running in Hindi, you can do that. So all the rest of the UI will run in English, but YouTube specifically will run in Hindi. So that is it. That's all the changes that are there in Funtouch OS 13. It's very, very tiny. It's blink and you miss it kind of upgrades. And Honestly, I still feel that Funtouch OS has a lot of room for improvement in UI design, the way the fonts are structured uh, and in the content itself, there's a lot of inconsistencies that I noticed through and through. For example, something as simple as when you head into sound and vibration, which I showed you guys earlier. And if you go down, you'll see that slash forward slash sign out here, you know, between medium and haptic, but there's a space between it. But over here, there's no space between it. It's just like, a you know, since I care about grammar and language so much, it gets my goat that Vivo cannot make this more professional. That is the kind of issue that I have with Vivo's Funtouch OS. Otherwise, it's very fast. It's very smooth. There's nothing wrong with it per se. Like if you can overlook all of this and if you're not a stickler for tiny things and you know, if, if it doesn't bother you, then it's absolutely fine. But you're paying a lot for a phone. It's this tiny attention to detail that sets a particular brand apart from the other. And that's where I want Vivo and Ico to sort of improve their game now. So what do you guys think of Funtouch OS 13? Do let me know in the comment section below. Did you guys like it? Did you not like it? What's your opinion? Until next time, this is Ashad signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.